Hi, so this is uh, an essential, if not possibly boring, subject to be covering. But obviously we've um, done all that work on the gasifier and there's a lot of joints in it. Uh, and when we're looking at those joints, we're clearly looking at sealing them. Now, sealing them have really two main requirements, really. That is the permanence of the seal and then the temperature that it's going to be under. Now, there would be a third one that would be vibration, whether it's going to vibrate or not. Um, we're not really going to be subject to much vibration unless we put this thing in a vehicle, and that's distinctly possible, we could do, but our main considerations really are the permanence of the joint and the temperature it's going to be subjected to. Now, for quite a lot of those joints, obviously, they're kind of permanent, really. Like the door, for instance. We used a special sealant on the door because we never expect to take that door frame off. And then the lid that fits on, that lid needs to come off, but not often. Maybe once every couple of years or something. So this having permanent or semi-permanent joints there that we can seal up are just fine. But things like the trap, where we're going to have to undo it and clean it, and things like the particle filter where we're going to have to rechange the filter material, then they're obviously temporary joints or joints that we expect to undo. Now that's going to dictate the materials that we're going to use in them. Now if we look closer towards the reaction chamber, the firebox, the hotter that temperature is going to be. When it comes out of the cooling unit, chances are we can just put our hands on those pipes and it'll feel a bit warm. If we put our hands on the reaction chamber, clearly you'd burn yourself. So the temperature gradient across that device is also going to have a big impact on the kind of material that we use to make the joints. Now, we used uh, a lot of this stuff. Now, it's not a silicon putty, it's a silicate putty. And so this is a sodium and magnesium silicate mixed with an inert material that when it gets fired actually turns into a glass. And it's the same thing that they used when they were doing the um, scrappage schemes, what is it, uh, cash for clunkers. They poured this into the engine and it turns into a glass and seizes the engine. But it does the same thing around any sort of joint. So you put this on, it air dries, when it gets to about 60 degree, 600 degrees or so, then it turns into a glass. And it's a solid and permanent joint unless you whack it with a hammer, in which case you, re you break that and then you need to remake it. So it's ideal for those permanent seals or semi-permanent seals in high temperature areas and that's why we've been using it around that um, gasification chamber and the barrel encasement because it's suitable for that job. Now of course we did also run down to the trap and that trap is the first trap that catches the tar and I've disassembled it here because it's nothing more than a couple of metal plates, four bolts and uh, glass. And the glass obviously goes in there, and actually upside down, the plate bolts on. And we've got a glass to metal union there, which is no, by no means adequate. Now, it's just at the bottom of the cyclone filter, so it's likely to get quite hot. So we need a temporary joint that can withstand the heat, and there are a couple of options there, actually. You can get room temperature vulcanization silicons or RTV silicons that are used for gaskets in engines that can cope up to four to 600. They're usually about a sort of, uh, they're a reddish color. Or you can use a high temperature rubber like this. This will stand about 400 degrees and it's a rubber sheet. Or we can use what they use in steam boilers, which is this stuff, which is graphite foil. All of these will compress and make a good seal for a uh, removable seal in a high temperature area like that. The RTV uh, high temperature silicons that are used in gaskets, when you do disassemble them, quite often it does destroy the gasket, incidentally, unless you take measures to prevent that. And we'll be dealing with that when we look at the seals on the particle filter. But on something like this, I quite like sheet materials, either a, a rubber that will cope with the temperature or a bit of graphite foil. And all you really do is lay the thing on that you want to make a seal with, cut out the circle, pop the two together and bolt the whole thing down. So that's what we're going to do, but we're going to do it from the rubber. And all I'm going to do is cut out two circles to go around that glass, one with a large hole in it. So with the trap seal, I've cut two discs of high temperature rubber. That one, which goes there, obviously that's the inlet hole from the actual cyclone. And then another flat one that's going to go on the bottom because we don't want to grip the glass on either side. We want a little bit of give. Now I'm using an ordinary 
highball glass there, which I think is cool actually. That goes on there like that, and then that disc goes on there like that, and then we have the top plate, and we top bolt that top plate down to clamp everything in place. And when it's bolted together, it's like that. Now be careful not to over tighten the bolts. We just want to put a little bit of pressure on the rubber just to make sure that there's a seal. Now obviously we have another joint here, which is a threaded joint. For that threaded joint, we need some joint tape. And this stuff is PTFE. It's often used in gas lines and water lines for threaded joints. It's good to about 300 degrees centigrade, which is probably about right here. And we wind that with the the thread with the thread tape and screw that back in to make a good seal there. So I'll finish that and put that trap back. So on the cooling setup of it, the main place to apply sealants are at these joints and that's because that's actually difficult to weld. I just put spot welds in, mostly because I'm not that great a welder and I've got an arc welder, not a MIG welder. So if I tried to weld that, there's a very good chance I'd just burn through the pipe. But it does mean that there's a little gap there that needs a permanent seal. We've got a couple of options. One is this high temperature specialist material silicate that you could actually just buy in the local big box store and it's not that expensive, but it is a little bit weak. It's meant for joints that you are going to take apart later and a sharp tap with a rubber mallet will help it part. So it's really meant for that. But then of course there is this stuff, which is a silicate mix with a fiberglass additive to it, and it's gun gum. And I'm going to use gun gum because it'll set rock hard, and it's advertised as a permanent joint. Now it's mostly used in automotive applications, so you see it on exhaust systems. So it, it withstands high heat brilliantly, it also withstands vibration, and it also withstands the environment, because it's basically underneath the car. Every time you go through a puddle, it gets splashed and wet. It's shaking like mad because it's actually on the exhaust system. So I figured this is a pretty good material to use. And all I'm going to do with it is wipe a bead all the way around those joints, including this joint where I put the actual trap on. Taking the second stage filter to pieces, and it's probably the most complicated bit to seal. And that's because there are so many parts to it. Now, I've only got so many parts because I'm using this steamer. But even so, that gives me about four joints to actually seal. And there's a number of ways, again, you can approach this. One is you could just use flat rubber discs. And I'm likely to do that on this section here. So I'll cut a flat rubber disc, and that will press against that to make the seal at the top. The bottom, obviously, is all welded up. So all I'm going to do is put some gun gum around them, again, to ensure that my welds are sealed. And then we have these bits in between where we need a seal here. Now again, you have choices here. One thing you can do is take some of this um, RTV silicon and put it around there in a bead. What you then do is soap that section there, press the two together lightly, don't squeeze all the silicon out, and leave it to turn. When it's turned, that one will separate and that one will stick and give you a silicon seal. So there's quite a lot of options on how to go about sealing this. After much deliberation, what I decided to do was do the silicon style of seal because it's a, a new way of doing it. And you can use a sealing style for doing lots of things. Like if you want to do a uh, fridge door repair or something like that. Now the, the first seal I've obviously made out of a piece of flat rubber ring because it's kind of, you know, sits flat against that. No worries at all. Now this one is where we're going to put the silicon seal, in fact, on the entire stack, so we're going to make four of these. Now I find it easier to run a bead around the outside than I do run around the inside. And it's got a little dip there, but when we put that on, it sits against that dip. So we don't need a huge amount of silicon. But you get your silicon tube, put it in a gun, line it up, and then run yourself a bead around the outside of that. There we go, around the outside of the pan. If you run a bead around all of the pans, what you do is you get a bit of dish soap or washing up liquid and run it around the rim. Because what will happen is the silicon will stick to this side where we haven't treated it, but it won't stick to that side. So we pop those in. And give them a little squeeze. Now you don't want to give them too tight to squeeze because remember we're trying to make a seal. If you really squeeze them hard, all that silicon will just come out. And obviously you don't want to do that. And then you 
put some washing up liquid on the next lip and so on. And when you've done that you basically put the thing to one side and leave it for a day or two. It reacts with the moisture in the air and that turns the silicon and like I said the silicon is going to stick to the steel that we didn't treat and it will part from the steel that we did and then we'll have made perfect gaskets all the way down. Now that's a whole host of ways of making seals and obviously the choice is yours really and I'm quite sure that other people will come up with lots of other different methods but I thought I'd introduce a few of them to you because clearly in this exercise sealing is important. Anyway we'll get back to this in a couple of days when it's dry. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.